This is the ICT Level 1 practice paper. We're going to practice a few tasks to do with spreadsheet. I have a list of tasks here that I need to carry out on this spreadsheet that I have been given. So I'm going to be changing between these two screens. I'll be going to my tasks and then I'll be swapping over to my spreadsheet to carry out my tasks. Number one, format the data so that it is clear and easy to read. So I'm going to go to my spreadsheet. Before I do anything, I can see that my page is quite small. My information is very small. I need to zoom in. So at the bottom of the page here, on the right, I'm going to click on this plus sign. And as I click on the plus sign, I can see that I have zoomed in to my page. I can see my data a lot clearer now. Okay, and that is by clicking this plus sign. Okay. So now I can see what it is I'm dealing with. The question said, make the data clear and easy to read. First thing I need to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is I need to make sure that I can read the title or heading of each column. And I need to widen the column. I do that by going on the line between two columns and double clicking. Again, line between two columns, double click. And by doing this, Excel itself will widen the column to however much is needed. Next, I'm going to highlight any names or headings or titles. These are the titles or headings of my columns. So I'm going to make them bold. I also want to make them stand out, so I'm going to add a little bit of colour. But this is entirely personal, you can choose a different colour if you wish. I'm going to look through the information and I can see once again I've got the word title. I'm going to make it bold and highlight it again. Under here I've got average, delivery charge and again title. I'm going to make it bold once more and highlight it with this color. Again, this is entirely personal. You might want to do it differently. You might also want to include borders, and that means highlighting all of your information, going to this little function here, clicking on the arrow, and you can click on all borders. That means you will have a border for every single cell. I do not want to use this function. So for now, I'm going to get rid of or remove the border. But that is your choice. I'm going to click on no border. I do not want a border, but that is your choice. I'm going to go back to the task questions. <coughs> Number two, add an extra row at the top and enter the title stationary hub. So I need to add an extra row at the top of my spreadsheet. I'm going to click on my spreadsheet again. I need, an, I need to add an extra row here so I can write the title. I'm going to click on number one. With my mouse, I'm going to right click and insert. When I do that, I have made space for an extra row above. Here is where I'm going to type in the title, Stationary Hub, which is what the question told me to do. Because it's the title, again, I'm going to highlight it, make it bold. I'm going to give it a little bit of color, but a different color this time, possibly green. So now my examiner or anybody who's looking at this can tell that this is the title and these are going to be the headings of important bits of information. Okay, so now that is easy and clear to read. I'm going to go to task number three. Use a formula to calculate the total cost of sales for 12-page leaflet. The total cost of sales for 12-page leaflet. Then use the same formula to calculate the total cost for all other items. 
right. So the question is asking me firstly to calculate the total cost of 12 page leaflet and put it here and then to calculate the total cost of all the other items. Looking at my information I can see 12 page leaflet I've been given the number needed, that means how many 12-page leaflets I need. I've also been given the cost of each item. And mathematics tells me that I need to multiply the number needed by the cost of each item. And I need my answer to go in cell D3. So I've highlighted D3 with my mouse. I'm going to enter a formula, which means I need to start with the equal sign. Number needed, I'm going to click on this cell, multiplied by. Multiply is shift and number 8 together, and you will get the star sign, which in IT means multiply. I'm going to multiply it by the cost of each item, and as I highlight each cell, it lights up. So that is my formula for D3. I'm going to press enter. So here I've calculated the total cost of 12 page leaflet. Next part of the question was calculate the total cost of all the other items. So I'm going to go to the bottom right corner of this cell and with my mouse I'm going to make sure that I get the correct place firstly and then I'm going to drag it all the way down so that that formula is replicated for all the other items. Okay. Number four, use a formula to calculate the total and then the average cost of items and display them in the appropriate cells. So task four is asking me to do two things, calculate the total and then the average cost of items. Okay. So first I need to calculate the total and then the average cost of items. Total is going to go here in cell D10. I've highlighted this cell with my mouse. I'm going to click on whatever information I need to include, which is the total cost of these items. I need to add all of these to give me the total. So I'm going to go to Auto Sum. And when I click on Auto Sum, it automatically sums all the information that I had highlighted. So that's a very easy way to calculate the total of something. Next part of the question was average cost of items. So I'm going to click on here with my mouse. This is where I want the answer to appear. I want the average cost of items and that does not include the total. So I'm going to highlight my cost of each item without the total. I'm going to go up here next to auto sum. I've got a little arrow. I'm going to click on average. And when I click on average, here is where I have the average of these prices that I calculated before. Okay. So I've used a formula to calculate the total and then the average cost of items and I have displayed them in the appropriate cells. Yes, my total is going to be in front of total and my average is also going to be in front of average appropriate cells. Number five, the delivery charge is £35. Use a formula to calculate the total plus delivery charge. So delivery charge is £35. I've already been given that here. I need to calculate the total, which is this, plus delivery charge. So I need to enter a formula, which means I start with the plus sign. I have my total and I'm going to put plus the delivery charge, which is £35 and press enter and this is going to be my total plus delivery charge okay display all data appropriately 
Now this means that ensure that if you are using prices, you have got the currency symbol, which we do. But I need to make sure that I've included this symbol in all the appropriate places. Here, number needed, <coughs> excuse me, tells me how many of each item I need. This does not need the pound sign. But here, whenever I have the word cost, I do need the pound sign. So I'm going to highlight all of these. And up here, I'm going to click on this arrow, which gives me the different currency symbols. I'm going to press on the pound sign. And now here, I've got the appropriate symbol for the pound sign. Usually, we need to add up to two decimal points, which I can see has automatically been done. So I have been able to display the data appropriately. Number seven, add your name and date to the footer. Okay, so I need to add my name and the date to the footer. In order to add my name and the date to the footer, some programs are that you click insert and you should be able to find header or footer at the top. In your test, if you cannot find a certain function you're looking for, you can always type it in search. I'm going to type header and footer and it will come up for me. This is my header and footer. The question did not want a header, the question wanted a footer. So I'm going to click on footer, go to footer. This is the footer of my page. And it asked for my name and the date. So I'm going to click on my name, uh, click on the left column to put my name, the middle column to put the date. And I'm going to put today's date, which is 2304.20. Okay. And if I click anywhere on the page, I can see that that has already been added. Excellent. OK. I have added my name to the header and footer. Now the question wants me to take a print screen of the spreadsheet and send it to the teacher via Teams. This is specific to my students who will be seeing this video. Yes. Okay. So my students will want to um, make sure that they can have all the relevant information that they have. They've got the headers, uh, the headings, they've got the title, they've got the total, and I should be able to see the footer as well, especially if they want to print. If they go to print, I will be able to see their name and the date here. And this is where they would take a print screen and send it to me via Teams. Before I end this video, some uh, questions might ask you to display your formula in formula, display your spreadsheet in formula view. And to do that, you would go to formulas and you would be able to click on show formulas. If you click on show formulas, you will see that all the formula that you have used will be displayed. All the formulas are here that we have used.